Welcome back everybody, my name is Nick930 and this is my review for the recently released Hunt Showdown. Hunt Showdown is a unique multiplayer first person shooter experience that combines elements of survival horror with the competitive atmosphere of a battle royale game. Players need to track down monsters in expansive worlds, while also carefully maneuvering the environment to avoid being detected by other groups of players hunting for the same quarry. It's an incredibly tense but ultimately rewarding experience, and it's paired excellently with a beautiful visual and audio presentation. But first, let's talk about the game's story and setting. Hunt Showdown takes place in a fictional 1800s Louisiana bayou that's fallen victim to a devastating plague, resulting in horrific creatures roaming the swamps. Players take control of many randomly generated hunters and are tasked with hunting down monsters by tracking clues and banishing them from existence. The game's overall theme shares a lot in common with games like Bloodborne and Resident Evil 7, but still retains its own unique personality, with excellent enemy designs, beautifully realized environments, and deep background lore available through bestiaries in the game's menus. But of course, Hunt Showdown's gameplay is where the experience truly shines. Hunt is broken up into two different game modes, Bounty Hunt and Quick Play. In Bounty Hunt, players can team up with one or two other players and spawn in one of many randomly assigned spawn points on the edge of a large map. After a brief countdown, all players in the match are let loose to hunt for clues and complete their assigned contract. Clues can be identified by holding down a button to activate an ability called Dark Sight, which allows players to see partially into another realm. Using this Dark Sight, players can spot clouds of blue particles in the distance that mark the exact location of any available clue to investigate. After each subsequent investigation, the player's map will narrow in on the location of a target. However, players don't need to find each and every clue, and in fact, can even luck out and stumble directly into the monster's lair early in the round. Once a player has located the monster, they are then tasked with killing it, a relatively simple task assuming other groups of players don't intervene. Each of the three available bosses feature their own unique attacks, which greatly help to mix up the gameplay loop, but they often will take a while to defeat, and all the gunfire during the fight will likely draw the attention of other nearby hunters. After a boss is defeated, players are then given an opportunity to initiate a banishment that will immediately alert all other players in the match and provide a massive waypoint in the sky for players to follow. This banishment phase can take a long time, and is typically the most dangerous phase of any match, as other players will turn their attention away from the AI-controlled monsters and clues and begin fighting each other over the bounty from the defeated boss. After this banishment is complete, players need to grab a bounty token off of the banished enemy and then escape to one of the set extraction points at the edges of the map, offering one last chance for rival hunters to intercept and steal the bounty for themselves. If a player is killed at any point throughout the match and a teammate fails to revive them, then that character and any of their unlocked weapons and upgrades will be lost forever, adding an extra level of urgency to each encounter. The other game mode is called Quick Play. Quick Play is a mode tailored specifically for solo players looking to jump right into a fight. Unlike Bounty Hunt, players are not tasked with hunting down a particular monster, but are instead searching for rifts in order to acquire the Wellspring. After someone acquires the Wellspring, every other player is then given their approximate location, and a game of King of the Hill ensues. It's an interesting mode, though it doesn't seem to really play to the game's strengths, as the mixture of both PvP and PvE are what really sets this game apart from the rest. Regardless of which mode you choose to play, they both will require extreme patience and cunning to come out on top. And this is where stealth comes in. Stealth, like many no-respawn based competitive shooter games, is fundamental to Hunt Showdown. Practically everything in the game world can be used to identify the location of other players, including broken glass, flocks of birds, and aggroing nearby AI-controlled enemies. But most of the time, stealth is not enough, and players will be forced to engage in open combat with each other trading shots with slow-firing lever-action rifles, double-barrel shotguns, and rusted old revolvers. The combat feels a little rough when compared to more conventional shooter games, as most encounters either end with a single shot to the back of the head, or an awkward two-minute firefight of players strafing left and right trying to land their one shot every few seconds. But to balance out this unusual arsenal of weapons, Hunt Showdown's time to kill is exceptionally low, with single shots to the head being enough to kill a player instantly. Players can also equip several different gadgets and consumable items, including dynamite, Molotov cocktails, and even distractionary devices to help turn the tides of battle. On top of this, players can also customize their hunter with various perks and buffs to suit their playstyle, adding an extra layer of depth to the experience. But unlike most multiplayer games, players don't just maintain a single character, but a set of up to five different hunters, each needing to be leveled up separately. If a player happens to die, then the hunter that was used will be removed from the roster, 
and all the purchased traits, weapons, and consumables equipped will also disappear. However, the game isn't as unforgiving as it sounds, as ranking up a hunter generally doesn't take too long, and all weapons, items, and traits can be repurchased using upgrade points and hunt dollars, which are generously awarded for most actions in the game. Through continuous play, players will rank up their main account, which will unlock new weapons and abilities to be purchased in the store tab. For players looking to show off further, there's the legendary skins, which can be purchased using valuable blood bonds. This currency is where the microtransactions come into play. While blood bonds can be earned by eliminating players in-game, the cost of various legendary skins and weapons is set incredibly high as a way to coax players into spending real money on additional bonds. Thankfully, these same weapons are still only available to players after reaching specific player rank milestones, and therefore it doesn't seem that there's any sort of true pay-to-win model here. Though I will say that the game's menu systems are a complete and utter mess. The menu is flooded with unnecessary sub-menus, filter options, and needless alternative tabs, making character customization more confusing than enjoyable. Removing the unnecessary filter buttons and putting them in their own folder, while also condensing some of the tabs so that they're all in one place would help drastically. And there absolutely needs to be a method of keeping players together between rounds, instead of requiring players to constantly re-invite after every match. Finally, let's talk about presentation. Hunt Showdown is running on a brand new iteration of Crytek's own in-house engine called the CryEngine. For those of you unfamiliar, the CryEngine was responsible for creating some of the most graphically impressive titles of the mid-2000s, including the original Far Cry, all of the Crisis games, and more recently, Rise Son of Rome. And just like those games, the visuals in Hunt Showdown are fantastic. Each of the two available open world environments feel incredibly detailed with high quality animations for the many different actors, high resolution textures, and very well implemented screen space reflections that help to mirror the dilapidated structures and swamps. Lighting pours through the trees with beautiful god rays, and if that wasn't enough, each of the two maps has four different available time of days that are chosen at random, providing a different experience every time. The sound is probably one of the better examples of sound design in video games today, with each and every seemingly ambient sound effect being triggered by an actual player or AI interaction. The only real downside to the Hunt's presentation is the somewhat stiff player animations, the cloth physics animations that seem to be locked at 30Hz, and some unstable performance with the anti-aliasing options enabled. Overall, Hunt Showdown is a solid competitive gaming experience, probably one of the more unique multiplayer games to come out this generation. The polished gameplay, beautiful visuals, and excellent sound design set a new standard that all multiplayer-only games should strive for. However, the design of the game's menu interface feels overly clunky, and simple things like keeping players together after rounds or offering an option to rejoin if disconnected should definitely be incorporated as soon as possible. The game's heavier emphasis on guerrilla warfare and the use of unconventional weapons from a lesser-used time period may not appeal to most. But I absolutely recommend checking this game out, especially if you and your friends are looking for something new to try. But what do you guys think? Are you interested in Hunt Showdown? Let me know in the comments section. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos posted every week.